All right, so this one is going to be a simple ways as to how to communicate with spirits. So, first and foremost, it is best for the practitioner to develop their astral hearing. Their astral senses, well, astral senses overall, but if they want to simply communicate with the spirit, then developing their astral hearing as well as uh, telepathic communication between them and the spirit is ideal. This is where you will get, if done correctly, you will get the best gnosis, the best information, and the best confirmation for the right. But again, this comes with practice and confirmation, which can be achieved through some of these other means that I'm going to go through. So, simple way to communicate with spirits apart from the astral senses, which again, highly recommend if you need help with the astral senses. I recommend working with Khalili too. She is amazing when it comes to it. I have called on her to help open up the astral senses of some of my buddies, and they have, it gave them the start that they needed. And of course, it gets better the more you develop, the more you use them. Sort of like a muscle. But, anyway, so, one, the easiest form of spirit communication would be to use a pendulum. Now, normally a pendulum is in connection with your higher self, in which it just says yes, no, maybe, or I don't know. How to use a pendulum? Very simple. You just get something. It could be a necklace, something with a weight to it that you want to use as a pendulum. And you just say, if it's your first time, say, show me yes. The pendulum will move in one direction. And then you'll say, show me no. It'll move in a different direction. And then you'll know, I don't know, or maybe when you see it. When you hold it, you want to try and keep your hands as steady as possible, so I recommend putting your elbow down on the table so you don't accidentally influence it one way or another. Um, but yeah, no, that's... It'll, the pendulum will get your foot in the door for spirit communication. A couple other methods that I found that um, are great when you are trying to communicate with a spirit is you could use... The flame of a candle, the way it flickers, the way it moves, the way, like you could say, if you're, if you're talking to an entity, like you've done the evocation, you know they're present, like you can feel the energy shift in the room, but you're not fully developed with your astral senses, then you could say, hey, if I heard you right, or if if you're okay with this, with whatever we're doing, can you just show me something through this candle flame? And often they can make it pulse or throb or move or flicker or something. That's another thing. Um, you could have them speak to you through using specific if you have books lying around uh, then you could ask them to point you in the right direction using one of the books in which they will sort of guide you to the book and then where to flip to in the book and which section to read or what to look at so you, they could help push you along what they're trying to tell you I have heard some people who use tarot cards every once in a while to help get a message for from spirits, but that comes with evocation and asking them to influence the cards to show the message that they want or they want to tell you or you want to know from them. So tarot cards, pendulum divination. Obviously, astral senses are a huge one. 
I'm going to keep reiterating that because it is important. The moment you get your astral senses, you could see, hear, easily communicate with spirits, then you are well on your way to becoming an amazing practitioner. Um... So, final thing I can think of is, much like the candle flame, you could <clears throat> ask for some sort of sign or confirmation from them in your outside world, everyday waking world, to show that the communication wasn't just one-sided. So, uh, one of these big things that happened, at least in my experience, was I called upon Hecate for something, and I was in development with my astral senses, and so I asked for a sign to to know that what I heard was correct, and as well as I was on the right path with what the right was to be done was going to be done. And I heard that she's going to send a black dog my way tomorrow. And so I thought, okay, whatever. Next day, with my dad helping in the basement, and my, my dog was outside. She was tied out to her little lead thing, you know, doing her bathroom and all that before we let her in. And me and my dad, we go upstairs, we look out the window, we see our dog, and then there, right next to her is a huge black dog that did not belong to us or anybody else that we knew that has not been on our street. And so it just appeared out of nowhere. Obviously, someone accidentally let their dog loose, but still. It was the day right after I heard her say that she would send a black dog my way to confirm. So it might be something as simple as that. Something that could be easily passed off as a coincidence. But when the coincidences like that start lining up, then they no longer become coincidences and they become patterns. And you know that you're on the right path and you're, well... Not going insane as much. All right. That's all for now. Have a good night.